I'd only been turning a few a uh, few months uh, with a a Jet 1014 mini lathe when I knew I was hooked on wood turning. So I I turned around and bought a Pyromatic 3520B. And I turned on it for 14 years. Very happy with it. But I recently upgraded to a C model. If you want to know why, keep watching. I've turned on a variety of, of great uh, large large lathes. But only after I'd been turning with it on a Pyromatic uh, B model, a predecessor to this, for, for several years. There's a lot of great lathes out there. One Way, Vicmark, Robust, they're all great lathes. But the best lathe for you is based on your idea of, of features and, and values. So I suggest if you're looking at a big lathe, find somebody that you can turn on their lathe to see if it resonates with you, just like this one resonated with me, because one size doesn't fit all. In this video, I'm going to walk you through each of the uh, features of this, this lathe and compare it with the predecessor B model. So it'll give you some idea if you're looking at any large lathe, you can evaluate the features. And if you've got a B model, you can decide whether it's worthwhile for you to upgrade. It may or may not be. Let's start with a weight of 726 pounds, almost 100 pounds more than the, the predecessor model. Uh, the, the different uh, features, the way they put that weight are shown in this chart right here. And you can see that the uh, legs, all about 32 pounds. The headstock, 264 pounds. There's an improved leg design with riser blocks. So if you're short, you can just leave the riser blocks off and that'll, that'll lower it by uh, about 4 inches. The, with the riser block, the height of the spindle is about the same on this model as well as the predecessor model, which is 44 and 5 eighths inch. Now, a general rule of thumb is the spindle ought to be just about where your elbow uh, height is. And of course your, your personal preference may cause that to vary some, but that's a, that's a great place to start. The width of the legs is still uh, 24 inches, but the overall uh, bedway is just a bit longer, uh, 51 and 3 quarters, or about 1 and 3 quarter inches longer than the B model. The storage box. There's there's similar uh, webbing on, on the insides of the legs, but because of the, the riser block, uh, the webbing is a little bit higher. It's about an inch longer from the inside of one leg to the inside of the other. So when I used my original storage block, uh, box, I needed to add a, a plywood uh, spacer on each end. There's less room at the top than, uh, because it's raised up higher, but it's still got room for me to put extra uh, tool rests here. And there's actually more room underneath here to, to sweep, so it's kind of a, kind of a trade-off on that. I had a piece of granite under here, but that would raise this up too much, so I put a piece of uh, piece of it inside here. But that's kind of overkill because it's 726 pounds. This is a beast, and it's really not needed. Let's talk about the headstock. The headstock is about one and three quarter inches longer for a more uh, a more stable base. It's also got a little fancier chrome uh, locking handle uh, on it which is more aesthetics than anything else. I didn't have any problem with the previous previous handle. I like the door uh, with the magnets. It, it's a minor feature, but it, but I do like it. Uh, it's a little easier to snap open and, and closed. It's got the same high quality bearings. Uh, there is some uh, redesign here on the, the, the cone, which makes it a little easier to get your tools uh, back here, if you, if that's your style of bowl turning, that that never was a problem with me on the predecessor model, but it was for some people. It's the same. It's got the same uh, high quality bearings and that that wide belt, which transfers uh, you know torque very effectively. The controls are now removable with a magnetic uh, that you can place them anywhere along the the lathe bed, which is a very nice feature. On the C model, you could buy an optional emergency uh, shutoff uh, or simply make one like I did for very little cost. The one thing that strikes me is, is the controls are a, a bit different in that the, uh, you don't have that big round mushroom, mushroom knob, but the shutoff for the, uh, the, the red button shutoff is raised higher, so it, it, it is very easy to, to shut it off. It's also able to maintain speeds as low as uh, 15 uh, on the low setting or 40 on the high setting, which uh, 
which is uh, an improvement over the, the B model, which had a little higher, higher settings as shown here. The spindle lock is much improved. You, you lock it in, in place. The B model did have a lock, but you had to hold it down. Uh, mine was an add-on feature that someone gave me to, to keep it in, so I didn't need to hold on to it when I was locking it. Indexing. It has digital indexing with 48 holes with a built-in pin with a spring instead of a uh, screw-in on the B model. So you turn on the indexing and, it, and you can see as you turn it, each one of them lights up that makes it really easy to index. A very nice feature if you use indexing. On the B model, you simply screwed in a, uh, a special screw into holes on on the head headstock, I never really used them, and I covered up as one of you viewers suggested, covered the holes up with tape to keep out the dust and chips off the spindle or bearing. Now the electrical, the main switch box allows you to completely cut off the power without having to unplug the lathe, which I never seem to do unless I remembered a thunderstorm was coming. This is a very nice feature; it makes it very easy to reach back here and just turn that that switch off. The manual says a cord is not included. The anniversary model, this model, did come with a cord, and I've heard some folks buying Mustard Monster versions said some of them came with cords and some of them didn't, and I suspect it's a feature of when they got the, when they bought it. Maybe they're, they're delivering all of them with cords, but the manual does not say how to wire the wall plug, um, but tells you to get an electrician, which just seems to me to be kind of a crazy, crazy thing. I want to acknowledge that Carl Ford provided a very uh, nice comparison on, in writing on his blog, and it was especially helpful when wiring up my new lathe. I'll provide a link in the show notes below to his blog. I bought a NEMA 6-20 straight blade plug for a 240 volt 20 amp circuit to match the wall socket I used with my B model. Because the online manual said no cord was included, I went to Home Depot and bought six feet of, of three-wired 14-gauge uh, cord. But note that what I bought would not fit through the opening on the main switch as it was a half-inch uh, thick versus the one that came with a lathe was only three-eighths inch thick. And the other one would not fit through the opening. So keep this, the, the one that I bought wouldn't fit through the opening on the main switch box. So keep this in mind if you're wiring it yourself and you have to purchase a cord. The lathe should come with a cord and a plug. As a minimum, the manual ought to tell you how to hook the how how to wire it without saying get an electrician. Some people might need an electrician, but a lot of you uh, out there don't. But you don't want to have to scratch your heads saying where do I plug in the wire. Now the inverter or the variable frequency uh, drive uses a different delta model. Uh, same delta is still the uh, high quality producer of variable frequency drives for equipment, but this model has a blower, is covered and has a blower to keep the uh, keep uh, the heat down, whereas the other model was subject to getting dust and chips in there, but it didn't, uh, but it was, it was open for cooling. The tailstock has Acme threads which allow this thing to move a whole lot faster, uh, and they're etched uh, very dark, uh, very well, both in inches as well as uh, millimeter, which is a very nice feature. The other thing I like about it, it has a key in here in this keyway that fits in, inside the quill which provides, uh, reduces the chances of maintenance versus the set screw that was on the B model that had a tendency sometimes to raise a burr, especially if you did a lot of, a lot of heavy drilling. And when it raised that burr, it made, it made retracting uh, or uh, moving the, the quill in or out uh, more difficult. In some cases you had to remove the quill and actually uh, remove that burr with a, with a file. The biggest uh, change though is the length of the um, tail, tailstock base. It protrudes an extra two inches which makes it more stable. Uh, but it also makes it heavier by about, I think, seven, seven pounds. Keep in mind with this, this extra cast iron moving the banjo and sliding the tailstock down, it's probably not a bad idea to occasionally wax your bed down or, as I do at the beginning of the day, based on advice from uh, John Jordan, is just wipe it down with a little, little WD 
a little WD-40 to make everything slide, slide well. Another feature, it's got a little fancier uh, chrome handle. The other one was nice. This one is a little more ergonomic and is a little, uh, a little fancier looking. Uh, I like the door. The door has, again, those magnet latches. It's a nice feature. It seals better. I don't think I'm going to get all the dust and chips that I got in with the predecessor model. And this is a nice place to, to store little, little extra fittings that you use, especially on your, your live center. The round clamping uh, part underneath here is a little bit larger than the previous one. I didn't have any other the problems with the previous one, but bigger is always better, right? Let's talk capacity. The C model manual says that the working distance between centers is now 36, uh, 36 inches. I don't have centers. Got the live center. Don't have the drive center. It's 36 inches, uh, whereas the predecessor model was 31 and a half. Max distance between the spindle face is now 40 and, five, 40 and 5 eighths inches versus 36 on the B model. I think they're stretching that just, just a little bit. I saw a Pyromatic spec that said you could turn 36 inches between centers. <laughs> uh, craft supplies that uh, add for one of these shows 35. I measured 34 and a quarter. That's uh, as far off as I care to go. Plus it looks like the bed weighs about uh, 1 and 3 quarter inches longer than before. And the tailstock length has increased from 7 inches to 9 inches, again with an increased uh, surface making it uh, more stable than, than previously. Although I didn't have a problem with the other one, but again, you think bigger is better. It appears to have the same quality motor, but with a noticeably increased cooling airflow, uh, and with that comes a bit louder blower, blower noise, but nothing uh, really objectionable. Alright, let's talk about the banjo. The banjo is an extra nine pounds. Let's look at it. I have both these mounted on the on the B model. They're, they are interchangeable in terms of fitting the bedway. It's the same width. Um, other than that, the handles, functionally, they're the same, same design. Uh, cosmetically, this is a little bit nicer. I didn't have any problem with this one. They both lock extremely well. One of the nicer up, upgrades, I think, with this is the locking mechanism where this clamps down on both sides. A very effective design. Just slides, slides in. Same familiar kind of uh, ratchet, ratchet handle, but it really, it really locks, locks down. Super tight. And this is one thing that I really didn't like about the B model was it, it shifted a little bit on me uh, because this thing just it's basically got a screw that goes in into the tool post, so it doesn't hold nearly as, as strongly, but, but it works. Uh, I put up with it 14 years, but I like this one much, much better. The banjo itself, uh, there is a weight difference. I couldn't tell you how much. I'll put it on the screen here. Uh, they're the same height, but there, there is more weight here because there's more cast iron. Instead of having a groove here, it's, it's, it's built up. Instead of it being round, it's square and, and flat, so there's just, there's just more cast iron uh, to it. In addition, the, uh, the plate at the bottom, or the lock, lock plate, is, is just a bit, uh, it's a quarter inch uh, wider on the, on the new one. And you can see the additional weight here is, in the side, this is... Um, Three quarter inch thick, whereas this is five eighths inch uh, thick. So there's definitely a, a difference. The C model comes with the exact same accessories as the B model. That is, it's got a very nice heavy duty faceplate. Although I wish it was like six inches instead of this one, but but it's a very heavy duty one. Comes with this cast iron wrench, which if you use a faceplate, I guess it's handy. If you don't use a face this faceplate, this is absolutely uh, useless. Comes with a four spur drive center. It comes with this very nice uh, drive center, similar to the to robust. It's got a couple of bearings. Uh, my my other one was I used 14 years. It never had any problems with it. The it's got this little knockout bar too that you can knock the the point out and just use the the ring if you 
if you care to. I find this uh, useless because it's aluminum so it doesn't hold up. If you touch it with your tool it's, it's toast. Um, I've had much better luck just using this cheap Chinese one because it's so much faster to take this $20, $20 one in and out. And I've used this one for about 12 years, never had any problems with it. So it works just fine and that's easier than swapping this out. Uh, if you do decide you want to knock the tip out, uh, the one thing I would suggest, this does not work especially well because there's no real weight to it and it winds up getting all bent up. If you ever change out any bathroom fixture and you got this, this thing that pulls out the uh, stopper, Man, this thing works great because they're usually brass. It fits in here real well. Got a nice uh, mushroom end of it, and you can smack that with a mallet, and this thing will come right out. One of the nicest things about the B model, as well as the C model, is this wonderful slide hammer knockout bar. This thing really has some weight and gives it a real punch, and it's got a, a brass tip to it. As far as I know, this is the only lathe on the market that has a knockout bar like this, and it sure beats the heck out of out of a uh, a rod with a plastic knob on it. The C model no longer comes with a safety guard; uh, it's an extra optional feature. But very few people use it. If you're interesting, uh, interested in my assessment of that, you might want to click on this video link above. All right, the big pluses for me is this better banjo with with the with the clamping action. The Acme threads, which track in and out a little bit faster with the improved keyway uh, lock uh, lock in here, which uh, is going to reduce maintenance. The lockable uh, spindle lock, the extra overall 96 pounds versus 630 pounds on the predecessor model, making it even more stable when you're do it, dealing with uh, large out of, out, of, out of round, out of balance pieces. The longer working distance, even though we might quibble about how much uh, it's increased, it is larger. So if you're using a table leg or a spindle, you won't have a, a, a problem getting it on here. The main switch in the, in the back that allows you to completely disconnect the power from the wall is a very nice, very nice uh, feature, reducing the chances of you getting a, a lightning uh, strike and damaging your variable frequency drive. The slower speeds are, are nicer uh, for some people. Uh, I haven't noticed the other ones be a problem, but, uh, but the slower speeds are a little bit nicer for sanding and, and finishing large, large bowls. And of course, the movable controls is a very, very nice feature. Now, are, these, are they, all these feature changes uh, worth the uh, expense of upgrading? Well, for me it was. You're, for you, your mileage, mileage may vary, but uh, prices do keep going up, and I did catch the Centennial model. Uh, again, it was a few hundred dollars cheaper than the Mustard model because it didn't have some. Uh, it was made earlier in the year. It didn't have some uh, cost increases with it, and they put it on a 10% sale at the end of the year or, or recently in order to to clear out the warehouse uh, of their Centennial models. And that 10% off made a difference, and also because it, it's a business expense, I can depreciate it, which makes the numbers work for me. The anniversary edition comes with a spiffy light. It, it pivots here and it has three articulations. It's LED. Very nice light. Typically this model is sold with, uh, with shipping including, including lift gates, so when they deliver it to your house they can actually put it on the, on the ground and typically the driver should be able to move it uh, on, on a pallet pallet jack uh, on flat good good area move it into your garage possibly even even your shop if you got roll up uh, roll up and again the negatives are for some maybe no cord uh, but the biggest issue I think was no instructions on how to wire that wire that cord uh, not having the plug plug would be nice but you know the previous model didn't come with a plug either. I did a I did a, an earlier video uh, just a couple of weeks ago on the unboxing. And so if you're interested in in uh, unboxing this thing and moving it, check out that uh, check out that vid video. Uh, if you're just starting out and you're looking at getting a a lathe, you might be interested in in the video I did on a starter lathe because uh, most of y'all are going to be starting with less expensive, smaller, less expensive uh, midi lays. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.